at the age of uh, 10 in the fifth grade, my, my teacher uh, at that time, uh, Miss Frank, uh, discovered um, after uh, catching me uh, doodling and drawing, which is something I spent a lot of time doing in school, she discovered that I had real talent for that, uh, for, for drawing, that is. And uh, she suggested to my parents that I um, uh, try out for, a, for an art scholarship that was being offered uh, uh, students at the time, or, or young uh, uh, children my age, actually older. I turned out to be the youngest of that class uh, that were given um, uh, art and drawing lessons on the weekends uh, at the Saks department store in, in, the, in the Bronx. And so I assumed from that moment on that I would be uh, an artist of some kind. Um, I assumed it would be the vis visual arts. I, I uh, graduated from the uh, High School of uh, Art and Design in New York, which is one of those um, you know, uh, art high schools like uh, performing arts and music and art and art and design was another one. Uh, actually. The year that I uh, transferred to that school from Cardinal Hayes High School, I was, went to Catholic school from the sixth grade to the tenth. By the time I'd had two years of all boys Catholic high school, I, <laughs> I figured I'd had enough of, of that kind of education. And, and I really was craving for some kind of artistic outlet. So uh, I transferred to art and design in, in my uh, junior year one of the best decisions I ever made, I think. And uh, I uh, majored in uh, advertising illustration. And, um, and I also began to perform in all, and I, actually I did throughout grammar school too, uh, performing in all the school plays and singing in the chorus and things like that. And, uh, but those last two years of high school at uh, Art and Design were like uh, an explosion of creativity and expression and all of that. You know? Especially after having had all those years of the regimented, you know, uh, the nuns and the, and the brothers and the priests, you know, <laughs> really uh, giving, giving me that kind of, um, you know, discipline and stuff, which was great. I mean, I, I, I'm, I, I don't regret that experience because I think it made me a, a better student. Uh, uh, when I made the transfer, I was still, you know, pretty, my, my grades were always good. You know. But by the end of um, uh, my high school years, I knew pretty much that I wanted to be an actor. I was uh, discovered, in fact, by um, uh, one of the teachers uh, who uh, was in her real life a dancer and choreographer. And she and her husband were in the process of, of mounting uh, a production and producing their first actual um, New York stage production. Of a, it's a, it was a musical review called If We Grow Up. And they were looking for young people to perform in this, in this piece. And when she saw me in the Spring Festival, you know, uh, as, as the soloist in the chorus and the lead actor in the school play, she asked if I would uh, like to try out for this, for this production. What is her name? Patricia Curtis. Uh, Patricia Taylor Curtis. Curtis was her married name. She, uh, she and her husband, Norman Curtis, were the uh, uh, writers. He was a composer. He was a fine pianist and, 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 uh, and composer. And she, uh, as I said, was a dancer, choreographer, and a writer as well. She wrote uh, the script for this piece. And um, so my, my parents agreed that it would be OK for me to try out for this uh, production. And uh, I was actually performing off-Broadway in New York during my senior year of high school. Once I realized I wanted to pursue that uh, through the um, mentorship of um, uh, Patricia and, and, and Norman, and Norman uh, I enrolled at the Circle in the Square Acting School and Manhattan School of Music and uh, studied, uh, you know, towards becoming a professional performer. One of my teachers, actually my, my first acting teacher, was also instrumental in getting me work uh, from that point on. Uh, he hired me for my first the summer stock production uh, of uh, a play, uh, The Fantastics, which had been running for quite some time by then and 
went on to break all records for, for the longest running play ever in New York City. <laughs> uh, it was a nice little simple um, um, uh, uh, love story, boy meets girl, you know, kind of thing. And there was a character called the Mute who didn't speak and he was like, he was an invisible character, but he was there throughout the entire play and he, and he performed certain tasks throughout and became the wind and the rain and the, you know, whatever, whatever elements were needed uh, in, in the story, he became that, you know. So it was a really great exercise for me and, and imagination and, you know, that kind of, and movement too, because I, I um, did study some dance as well with the, at the Alvin Ailey uh, uh, Theater. Uh, so, um, yeah, by then I, I, I uh, had joined Actors' Equity and, uh, was on my way to a career. That was in 1964.